Yo, dude, what's up? There are loads of ways of doing snow bases. You can use things like baking soda. You can use just white powder, not that. Uh, you can use stuff from like Games Workshop and so on. They, they've, every company has a snow effect thing. Now. But I'm going to show you two different ways of doing snow using exactly the same products to give you two different effects. One of which will be on a Legion of the Damned mini that we're painting up over on Twitch. And we want a variation on snow that's melted, that's sort of running back into water and evaporating away because he's a Legion of the Damned. His body's covered in flames. And let's be fair, I want those to give out some heat. The other way is with a very large, kind of settled, fat, voluminous snowbank for which we're using a Foul Blight Spawn model that we also painted over on Twitch. That model's also gone over onto Patreon where I've got a video that teaches you exactly how to do things like the demon's head in the tank on the back. So do check that out if you're interested. Now, these two minis, both fantastic models and you can have a really nice scenic effect to the base. So stay tuned throughout this video, I'm gonna show you two different ways of doing snow and some cool tips and tricks that you can use along the way. Okay, so we are kicking things off with our Legion of the Damned Marine base. We've just taken some bark, glued that down to a 40 mil base to give him a nice bit of presence on the battlefield. We're gonna make him stand on the rock and that's gonna really help give him that sort of pivotal rock style that GW loves right now. We're taking some Vallejo earth textures, the dark earth. And as you can see, it looks a bit weird, but it looks very much like Astro Granite from GW, whatever that thing is actually called. However, the equivalent amount of Astro Granite to fill this pot will cost you about 48 pounds. This pot costs nine quid from Amazon with prime delivery. So definitely start picking this up and save yourself some money. This goes on every single part of the base that doesn't have a rock on it. But importantly, it does go up the sides of the rocks to help bed them in. So just spooge that around the base and get everything nice and covered, get that texture down. We're then gonna start adding some more texture to it and to do that, we're using some products from Rival Crafts. And I've got links to all the Rival products in the description below. We're starting off with a very large scale ballast. This is gonna go on and provide a little bit more of a rocky feel to things. We're then gonna just prod those in with the end of a brush to make sure that everything sits into the pumice and glues it all down to the base. After that, we're taking some of the smaller ballast that we've got on there to help provide more of a gravelly texture. And then we're just knocking that in, tapping the base on our surface to help bed that into that pumice. And then finally, the particulate sand. This gives the entire thing a really nice soft texture, it makes it look like it's about the right scale as well, because we've got a mini stood on it and it shouldn't really be stood on this massive pile of stones as far as my vision of this particular miniature goes. So those three things, absolute game changers for me. When I found those, we never went back. And then priming the base with just some Vallejo airbrush primer. I'm going to start painting the rocks battlefield brown. Now, I'm doing all of this with the airbrush because that's just how I work. You can do it with a paintbrush. And you can use Mournfang brown from GW instead of battlefield brown from P3 to get a similar effect. But essentially get the entirety of the base covered with that paint. Get a nice solid brown on there. Then start adding in some Troll Slayer orange. Regardless of how much paint goes in here, you want to make sure that your paint to flow and prove it is one to one. If you're doing this with a brush, just start sort of painting in certain small areas. Don't do full coverage with it. There's no need for that. But do make sure you get a solid amount of it on. Add more trolls there orange. We're starting to build the warmth now in these rocks. I really like having contrast within my miniatures and having a warm part of a base next to a really cold part of a base is going to give us that contrast and it's going to look really really good as a result but then finally putting on some pure troll slayer orange again i'm using the airbrush you can use a paintbrush and just paint some of the higher areas with it get some variation in that i'm then using some mid brown wash from army painter but if you've got just gw products you could use seraphim sepia you probably want two coats of it though or one really thick coat to get the color that you want and then you edge highlight parts of your rocks. This is gonna really draw the eye to those areas and make it snap into focus. Don't dry brush it, it leaves a weird texture, which I'm really not a fan of. Just get the edge highlights down. And then start adding in some tufts. I've used Deadlands Tufts from Rival Crafts. Again, big fan of their stuff. 
These tufts are fantastic. The adhesive's really good. They sit in place well, and they look brilliant. We want some nice dead looking grass to go alongside our snow base. Okay, so this is crushed glass. It is powdered glass. So glove up, wear a mask, wear goggles, make sure you've got both gloves on when handling this stuff. This is not to be messed around with. However, all of those safety concerns aside, this looks more like snow than anything else I have ever used. I've used a previous version of this from a different company uh, that now, unfortunately, no longer in business. This absolutely destroys that. This, instead of being like a granule, is a powder. Because it's glass, it has that sparkle and shine of real snow, and that's why we're gonna use it for these bases. Okay, so here's where we're gonna start splitting off our two bases. Currently, everything we've done up front on this base has been done the same on our Nurgle base. However, I want these to be different styles of bases. For this particular base, we've got a Legion of the Damned Marine that you saw earlier on, and I want him to have like a fiery heat coming out of him. After all, we've got flames all over his armor, so why not make the guy actually quite physically hot? So for this base, we're gonna do a very sort of melted snow. So imagine that you've got um, like spring just starting to come back after a harsh winter and it's starting to just drop away some of the snow on there. You could use it for any kind of base that fits that kind of theme. In this particular case, we've got our Space Marine that's glowing hot, therefore less snow, melting into ice and becoming steam. That's what we're doing for this one. Okay, so once you've got all your PPE on, we're taking some Vallejo water texture. Now, normally you do use this to apply water effects to something. But in this case, what it's gonna do is dry really transparent and it's gonna allow our snow to sit on it. And it's also gonna give us a nice wet look to some of our base. This is gonna give the effect of that snow melting away in making sure we've got something that looks how I want it to look. So when we put our crushed glass on, we're just gonna sprinkle it on, liberally covering all of these areas. And we're gonna make sure we leave that to dry for a decent length of time. I'd recommend about an hour or so with this put somewhere that you can't knock it over, you, the dog can't get to it or whatever. And just make sure you give it a good coating of that. Tap off any excess once that drying time has gone by. Make sure you've not, you know, put the excess anywhere that again can be causing harm to something. And now I'm just applying a little bit more of this liquid gel. This is gonna give us that nice wet effect I was talking about. And we want the snow to look like it's thawing out, like really pretty much as we speak. So just a nice small layer of that around the edges of the snow to give a transition from the dry areas on the base to the still wet snowy areas. Now we're taking some of this amazing liquid frost from Green Stuff World. It's basically a saline solution and salt crystals will form on this. So I'm applying this to a few of the tufts to give them a nice sort of frosty effect, which works well in a snow environment. I'm also going to make sure we put some on the base itself. Now I did find that I had to work this into the tufts, and I also found that I needed a couple of applications for it. But by adding this to things like our rocks, to some of the snow, to some of the tufts, and so on, we got a lot of different effects across the same base. So this gave us a varied kind of cold feel without it being too sort of regimented uh, and looking like it was too planned out. I wanted it to look somewhat natural. One of the easiest ways to achieve a natural effect is to have an element of randomness to it. So we let all of that dry and here it is after one application. I'm just popping on a second one here and there to make sure we get these really nice tufts. And now look at the ice crystals we've got there. As you can see, the base rim is a bit messy, so we just took a sanding stick, smoothed all that out, and got us back to a nice, tidy base rim. All we need to do then, get ourselves some black paint, hit all of the rim with that paint, being very careful not to get it on the snow. And I think you'll agree this looks really very much like something that's a molten uh, set of snow. And then we just need to pin our mini to the base. Of course, him being Legion of the Damned and having all those flames on there, I really thought would help the theme of this base, but you could use this for anything. Maybe you've got a late winter, early spring Sylvaneth army or something for Sigma. Doesn't matter, you could be doing anything you like, but if you want something that has this kind of effect and feel to it, this is a really good guide to follow as far as I'm concerned. And I think it's come out really, really well. What do you think? Leave a comment below.
Also, if you like the video, why don't you give it a cheeky thumbs up and add it to your liked videos list. And if you're not already a subscriber, why not consider subscribing? Don't forget, we're also live on Twitch four times a week where you can see me painting things like this in real time and ask any questions that you might have, as well as a Patreon campaign where you can join in, get private one-to-one -one tuition, uh, and also see other videos exactly like this. In this case, for instance, you can see how to paint the uh, demon's head to go in a tank on that guy's arm. Now they're going to see how we got this effect on our base with a nurgling kicking balls of snow. And we did all of the same things that we've already done. So we put some pivotal rocks on the base for our nurgling to stand on. We added some more here and there to help give us a rocky environment with some super glue. We used the pumice. We used the textures. We did everything exactly the same, including the painting, to give us basically two bases that were exactly the same but then we're gonna change things up quite dramatically. Now, I did all this again with the airbrush, but once again, you could do this by just painting it on by hand, whatever is best for you. Again, though, do edge highlight some of your rocks. So here I tried something a little bit different to what I would normally do. Normally I use some Vallejo still water to attach snow to the base and it gives this really nice, thick, voluminous kind of bank of snow. But in this case, I decided, seeing as I've been using this so much recently in this week's Patreon video where we did the Foul Blight Spawns backpack. So if you wanna see how to get a demon's head safely nestled inside that or whatever else you wanna put in there, go for it. Go and watch that video over on Patreon. There are links in the description below. However, it didn't really work. We attached it to the base, we put the snow over the top of it, and unfortunately, it was very flat. And even with like a second application of it, it was still quite flat, and I couldn't really get it to bulk up. So, next time, don't worry about this. Absolutely pissed this step off and just use the Vallejo still water or any other kind of water effect that's got a bit of liquid to it. I think the biggest issue with this is that it's very thick, very viscous and not runny enough to allow the snow, the gra glass granules to settle down into it and really give us this nice fluffy kind of snowbank. Okay, so after we got rid of uh, our UV resin in favor of the water texture, we just put some on and let it pool across the miniature. Just tilt the mini, allow it to run around a little bit. Do try very hard to not let it run off of the base itself and onto the base rim. You will want to clean it up immediately with just some tissue. And then pretty much bury it with your crushed glass. Give a really good solid coating of this all over. Let it dry for about 20 minutes or so to allow it to sink in a little and then tap off the excess. And what we're gonna do is a couple of coats of that. This is gonna build up a really nice thick bank of snow. We're using a pipette and some more of that water effects now. And we're just dropping this on top of the areas where our snow has previously fallen. We're then gonna give this another complete coating using that glass granules, the powdered snow effect from Arrival Crafts. And again, link to this product is in the description below. And you'll see that by the time we've done that, we're starting to get a really thick depth of snow that this Death Guard Marine is walking through. Then to help seal it all in, we're adding one more pass using a pipette and that water effects, letting it dry thoroughly, cleaning the base rim, adding a black base rim to make it really stand out. And now we're getting into it with some fishing twine. So what we're going to do here is we're going to cut down a couple of very short legs. And I cut these a little bit longer than I needed to, just so I had room to adjust when we were putting this on the miniature. So I thought three was going to be about right. We took some more of that heavy gel that we used on our Legion of the Dan guys base, and we just put this near where the Nurgling's foot was. Make sure we sort of spread it down onto the snow. It will dry transparent, but we do want to make sure it doesn't just have a lump out of nowhere. Then we're going to attach our little bits of fishing twine using this heavy gel to our base. Now, when it dries, it will dry solid and hold these in place. I put my three little bits of fishing twine on there, and then we used a pair of tweezers to really just help get them in place how I wanted. This was a little bit fiddly, but if I'm honest, if you were doing a lot of this, uh, maybe you've got a large... Um, like scenic miniature, like a, a centerpiece mini that you needed to do, or maybe you wanted to have lots of these kind of effects across an army, you get the practice and get it in there nice and quick. We then used more of the heavy gel to attach the 
next bit of our base, which is some glass micro balls. Now, I bought this off Amazon for about £5 for 300 grams or so. I'm never going to need more of these things. And they come in really, really handy for stuff like this. I also used them in the gas tank on the Fab Lights one's back. But that heavy gel will glue them to the end of our fishing twine. That doesn't really look like snowballs at the moment. So I went back to using the Green Stuff Liquid Frost and we applied a little of this to every single one of them. What this did after a couple of applications is take it from something that was transparent and turn it to something that looked like it was trailing flung snow, as you can see there. So now we've got a nurgling kicking snow. We've got a really fun, cool, unusual snow base and it really, really does look like snow. Look at the glisten of it. You can't tell it doesn't look like snow. I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff. And I hope to see you in the streams for the next time. Take care, everyone. Peace out.